I'm going to talk about API plugins, which is a new thing that was announced last week at a build. And uh, so um, it's it's really a cool concept. It's the ability to extend Copilot for Microsoft 365 with just using a regular REST API um, and some packaging. So um, <clears throat> without further ado, let's dig into it. Um, the landscape for extending Copilot in Microsoft 365 grew at Build. We still have graph connectors. Um, we still have plugins, although sometimes they're called actions, or they, we think of them as actions because you're taking action in real time. And then we have some new ways of building custom Copilots, and one of those I'm going to talk about with Seb Lever next week. So lots of fun things coming. Today I want to talk about uh, this new type of plugin, which is an API plugin. And so really there's a few ways to make these right now. There's uh, Teams message extensions uh, or even Microsoft 365 message extensions that work in Outlook are now plug are still plugins. Um, there's a whole set of plugin types for Copilot Studio, so I don't have time to get into those. Plus, I don't know that stuff as well. Um, but today I'm going to talk about API plugins, uh, which is the new the new tech. Uh, on the block. So I'm going to start by showing you my API. So um, this is a new sample. We've got a link. Uh, we'll post, post a link at the end, or David might post one sooner, uh, called Tray Research. It's a consulting company. And um, it's an Azure Functions app. We can take a look at that in a minute. Uh, but basically, um, there, here, I just want to give you a tour, an idea of the API. So. If I go slash API slash me, I get information about me as a consultant, where I'm a fictitious user called Avery Howard today. And uh, I guess the thing is that to show is that there's a ton of information here. So where many APIs might return a minimum amount of information because they're thinking about a mobile browser situation or something. Uh, in this case, we don't know what prompt the user asked for Copilot. So we're going to provide all the information that it might need, because all we know is at, at the behind the API, right, is that it called slash me. It wants information about me. Um, I can also get all the consultants. I can get consultants by name with this query string. Uh, I can get it based on their projects or um, skills, things like that, right? Um, I can also look for projects. So there's a slash API slash projects. And then uh, and it wants to know the uh, number of hours and which project. Notice that it's taking a name, even a partial name of a project here. So it's it's kind of a forgiving API. It's designed to make it easy for the AI to call it rather than having to maybe look up a project ID uh, based on the name and then uh, do a second call to get the details or to bill, uh, sorry, to bill my project. And then I can also add someone to a project uh, thusly, right? So, um, so that's fine. Um, let's see how this manifests in Copilot and then I will show you how to build one of these. So here I am in Copilot, and the first thing you always want to do with a plugin is is enable it. So there's this little plugin panel, and I'll go ahead and uh, flip this one on. That you can see I've been working on a few different instances, and um, <clears throat> here's there's you notice it says Trey is on Try It Now. So what happens if I click on Try Now? I actually get some conversation starters. So these are suggested prompts for things that I might that I might want to do. Um, and are, are people having trouble with my screen share? Should I stop and reshare re or something? I, I can uh, see it's working. Okay, yeah. okay. Yep, so anyway, here. so so um, yeah, so let's pick one of these. I'm gonna just say, what projects am I assigned to? And notice that down the bottom um, that I'm showing the log file from the running app. So you can see that Copilot called slash API slash me. And indeed, these are my projects. Uh, what's not there yet is the adaptive cards. So eventually, you'll be able to see adaptive cards in this display. 
I'm not sure exactly how they're going to show, uh, but that wasn't working. When I left for build and since I just got back, I haven't really had a chance to dig into it. Uh, but there is, I'll show you where they get defined anyway in the uh, in the schema. So now let's see, I need a trade consultant who knows C-sharp and is available immediately. So this is an example of a multi-parameter query. So if you look at the log file, you'll see it says skill equals C-sharp, hours available equals one. So this is how I'm getting uh, consultants that are available immediately is they have some hours available. And you can see two of my teammates are here. Rabia Williams actually co-wrote this, uh, this sample with me and Gary Trinder helped quite a bit as well as he wrote the developer proxy, which is a great way to get started quickly on the packaging. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So I don't know which one to assign. So I'm just gonna say which one is closer to the Southridge project. And you can see that Copilot's going to query um, the project and the consultants again. And it's using the web now to check the mileage. And uh, it's determined that since the project is in Sydney, um, uh, Australia, Robbie is much closer at 570 miles away compared with Gary, who is in England uh, over 10,000 miles away. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool that it figured that out. Uh, let me now go ahead and see if we can put uh, Rabia on the project. And um, it's going to show me a, a, what's called a confirmation card. So this is basically before we actually allow the API to update some information, we're going to make sure that Copilot wants, Copilot wants to make sure that it has the facts correct. And in fact, this is a problem. Um, we only have, we probably do have two weeks of work or four weeks of work, but we only have 20 hours in the budget. So we're really going to stick it to Rabia here and give her only uh, 20 hours in her forecast. Has anybody ever seen this movie before um, in the consulting world? So uh, now it's going to go ahead and update uh, the dialogue. And uh, let's see. Yeah, that looks right. That's what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and acknowledge that. And... Um, I know, right? I, I, people are freaking out. I know, like I've been, I've seen this uh, in real consulting environments. It's pretty scary. So I'm having my fun, uh, poking fun at it here. So anyway, so here we are. Uh, yes, we've successfully assigned her and you can see the post request that went through down in the log file. So um, now let me uh, switch to another scenario here. Um, and actually, I want to see how this works. So I'm going to turn on developer mode. So minus developer on. And now if I just ask it some other prompt, like what is Rabia working on, um, I'm going to get back. Obviously, it did the call. And I get back a nice response with all kinds of detail from that detailed response. But check this out, right? Developer mode gives me some more detail. So it, it had the Bing web search and the Copilot plugin turned on, and it had these five functions, and it selected the get projects function, and it got back a 200. So this is a great way to see how Copilot is reasoning over your plugin. And, uh, you know, sometimes updating the description in the packaging can help to make this more accurate. Um, so it's a good way to get some insight there. So um, one other little scenario here, I really need to bill my hours because I need to get my utilization bonus for the quarter. And I'm um, sure a couple people can, uh, can uh, relate to that. So um, I forgot how many hours. So I'm gonna say find my hours spreadsheet in OneDrive, get the hours for Woodgrove, and then bill the client using Trey, using the plugin. And it, Son of a gun, it found my, my uh, spreadsheet. It grabbed the number of hours out of the spreadsheet. And there's the confirmation. And I can go ahead and bill my hours. So, uh, you know, big potential time saver there. And uh, in case you're not sure if I really uh, had a spreadsheet, you can see um, there is a, a reference there. So, um, oh, there's the, uh, there's the post request. And now if I go up and, and click on that reference, you can see my uh, incredibly detailed, well-designed spreadsheet that I have made for tracking my hours. So, um, so the way this works, let's take a look now at how you might build one of these and how it actually works.
So um, this is what the package looks like. So it's a manifest, which is the same manifest that you've used for Teams apps in the past. It's in fact, you can mix and match the features. You could put this plug in and then you could also put like a Teams tab or a, a chat bot, which could also be like thought of as a custom co-pilot maybe. Um, you could put, uh, you know, kind of a mix of things in there and they all get installed together as one package. So let's take a look at the package format and how it all looks in Teams Toolkit. So if you grab the, uh, the sample, yes, nobody, had, nobody knows about um, utilization bonuses, right? Um, does this mean ISVs can publish in the App Store? Yes, it does. It absolutely does. Um, so um, that's good news, and I'm hoping to see some some good things there. It's in we're in private preview right now, so there is an ISV uh, program um, to get in on that. Otherwise, uh, most of us will be waiting a couple of, a month or two probably for um, public preview. So here's the here is the solution as created in Teams Toolkit. What I love, just I'll just throw in something here quickly, which is that they are now using Azure Function V4. So it is so much easier to read and um, and and you can structure your project more nicely and things like that. But really, this all the, most of this code is just implementing the API. And I don't think, you know, you probably don't need to know how to implement an API. Um, you may already have one, although you probably want to make sure it's kind of simple and easily understood by the AI. Here's my manifest. And um, the uh, uh, it's just an ordinary manifest, except for I have some copilot extensions. One is declarative copilots. I'm not going to talk about those until next week, except for maybe a little tease. Um, this is a really cool feature, but here's my plugin, right? And notice that it's tray plugin.json. So, you know, everything is, is JSON files in a zip package, just like you might expect. So here is the, um, here is the big package, right? This is the one, this is that, that actually defines the plugin itself. And something you'll notice is that there's definitely detailed descriptions. These are going to be read by Copilot. And so we have filled in a lot of details on what all the different parameters are and what they need uh, to be and what's required, right, is important. And then uh, here, here are the response. This is for telling Copilot what are the most important fields and also kind of giving it access uh, for a very small little preview. Whereas the, if we show a more detailed preview, we'll have this adaptive card to look at, which as I said, isn't quite there yet, isn't working yet. We'll plug in a prettier adaptive card when uh, this, this one was just generated by Teams Toolkit and is kind of simple. Um, and let's keep going down and show some other important stuff. Um, so here's the, yeah, get user information was one, get projects was one, post my uh, hours. Okay, so this one is the is a post, so it's a little bit different. And one you'll see is, now I, I'm filling in the required fields. So we're gonna tell Copilot, hey, these, are, these things have to be provided. You can't bill a project without telling me which project it is. And again, I have, um, the capabilities, and this time I have the confirmation card. So here's how you can customize that little confirmation. And um, and then if we go down far enough, we'll get to some cool stuff like um, auth. So right now, um, when I left for build, auth was not working. So this one is anonymous. We're currently working on an auth version so there are three types of auth that will be supported. And uh, one is anonymous. One is an API key. So if you have a key that needs to be stored, that will get stored inside of the Teams developer portal. Although Teams Toolkit can automate the whole process of storing it for you. Um, but it's stored in a secure location inside of the developer portal. Or OAuth is an option. 
And for this, you'll be able to specify all the details uh, for an OAuth connection. So it will work with Entra ID, but it will also work in um, the, uh, um, I'm sorry, it will work with other OAuth providers. So if you have a third party OAuth, that's fine too. Um, this trade definition, this is the open API spec, sometimes known as a swagger. So if I come in here and look at that, you'll see it's, um, oops, wrong one, doo, 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 this one, right? This is just a, a standard open API doc, not to be confused with open AI. I don't know how many times I typed that incorrectly, but it was a lot. Um, but again, putting in a lot of details in the descriptions so that Copilot can figure out what, what to do. And, um, and then here are Localization, I think, um, is really important, but I don't think it's working yet. This will allow you to put tokens elsewhere in this file, for example, in the adaptive cards, and then replace those tokens based on the user's preferred language. So this is really important um, for us to, you know, kind of complete the product. Obviously, um, there's places where you have to have localization, and we want to have it and make our products accessible to everyone. So of course, um, that's something that's coming soon. And then the conversation starters, these are the ones that you saw in my demo. So um, that's about what I wanted to show here. Um, and uh, let's see, I think I have one slide left, which is sort of the links to stuff. So aka.ms slash API plugins will get you to the private preview documentation. We don't normally publish that, so it's kind of unusual. Um, then the build session that I got to do with David Rousset, um, with a lot of help from Gary and, and Rabia behind the scenes, is uh, is here. And then the sample that I just showed is available. But uh, fair warning, it's going to change. We're, we're continuing to develop on this until we get all the features working.